if you're new to wood burning and you're not sure how to take a reference photo and put it onto a piece of wood, that is what we're going to cover today. Okay, so here I have a blank piece of wood. I've already sanded it down very nicely. You want the wood to be sanded. It will make a much smoother surface to burn on, and it also helps reduce carbon buildup. So here I have my piece of wood. Here I have my reference photo that I've already uh, worked on in Photoshop and kind of preset the size to match the piece of wood. So next up, we're going to cut out the reference photo. So now I have cut my reference photo to match the piece of wood that I'm using here. And then we are going to secure this with some tape. So you want to get this lined up as best you can. Now I have pretty long pieces of tape because when I do this I secure the top and then I fold it down and wrap the tape around the back side of the wood like that. Okay, so that works pretty well and it creates kind of a hinge pattern so you can see underneath. A lot of times I'll also secure a little tape um, down in the lower right hand corner because even just taped twice here at the top it still can wiggle a little bit back and forth so I like to take out that wiggle and apply a little bit of piece of tape over here. Now I'm not going to wrap it around that bark um, so I'll just kind of go like this. Now if you're worried about the tape kind of really sticking to the wood and um, if your tape is super sticky it can pull up a little bit of the wood fibers so sometimes you can even like tape it to the back of your hand a couple times and that takes a little bit of the stickum off then you can apply it press down and then when you pull it off it's not going to tear those fibers as bad okay next up I have a piece of graphite paper using graphite paper is one of the better options to use when transferring an image onto a piece of wood you don't want to use carbon paper because that can apply some unhealthy chemicals to the wood and you don't really want to be burning over that so I like to use graphite paper so after you have your picture taped on we're going to take this graphite paper and there's kind of a shiny side and then a dull side with this graphite paper you want the dull side down and the shiny side up and we're just going to kind of slide this underneath here and kind of reach around and grab that edge now because I am right handed I like to secure this tape over here and then have the excess paper on the left hand side that's just my preference um, you can switch it if you want because I'm right handed I don't want to fight all of this over here underneath my hand I have done that before and it just kind of is a little bit irritating okay so now that I have my reference photo securely taped and my graphite paper is slipped underneath I'm gonna take a red pen and slowly start drawing in the basic shapes I prefer to use a red pen because if you use a black pen sometimes it's or even a blue pen it's sometimes hard to see against the values of the printout. Whenever I create a reference photo for wood burning, I make sure that I create it in a sepia tone. Using a sepia tone photograph helps me to see the, the wood burn tones much more easily. Now, you can also do a black and white photo, and I strongly suggest that you do not use a colored reference photo when wood burning. Your eye focuses on the colors so much that it's hard to see the values and with wood burning values are king they are so important the values are the most important thing of a wood burning so if you do want to add color later that's great that's fine but when working from a reference photo I really suggest that you turn it into a sepia tone photograph and if you can't do that then put it into a black and white photo instead so one of the first things that I want to do when transferring an image onto the wood with graphite paper is to focus on my basic elements. You 
you know, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the eyebrows, the general shape of the face. And then after that, we'll work on some of the contouring of the face as well. A lot of times I focus on some of the darkest values first and kind of go from there. Now it's really important when transferring on an image that you transfer everything as you see it exactly. Even if it doesn't quite make sense to your eye, that's okay. Sometimes we get a preconceived idea in our mind as far as how something is supposed to look. Well, um, with her eyes tipped to the side, that's going to change how we think we should see things. Her pupils are not going to be perfectly round in this case. They're going to be more oval because she's looking to the side, and that's totally normal. So really do your best to transfer on everything that you see exactly. So now I have some of the basic forms of the eyebrows, eyes, and nostrils laid in. Now I'm going to go back through and work on some of the contouring, the what I like to call topography zones. These are the irregular zones that make up the basic shapes of everything. If you skip this step of contouring, a lot of times your portraits or images that you're trying to burn are going to lack um, a lot of that important depth. To try to look and find the difference in value from one section to another and lay those areas in. When you transfer on these topography zones, make sure that you use a little bit lighter pressure. You don't want you don't want those areas to be quite as dark. Even so, we're probably still going to do some sanding and lighten up these topography zone lines as we go. Now, when transferring on a mouth or lips, the same thing is watching for these irregular topography zones. Try to transfer on everything that you see in the reference photo. Okay, so when I, when I do this, I'm not going to draw a hard edge all the way around the lips, even though I know that the lips are there. If I draw a hard line and burn a hard line around these lips, it's going to look a little bit unnatural. So instead, I'm going to follow the contours here to a certain point and then backtrack and start laying in some of the topography zone. And there's more zones in here. And so your eye will kind of fill in that missing gap right there, and it'll all make sense. But if I just draw in a hard line, it's going to look a little bit too harsh. Okay, so now I'm going to start working on some of the outer edges of her face. So this is going to be kind of an irregular topo zone up here. And then we're going to kind of follow some of these hairs that are coming up in and attaching to her head here. Now ears are also going to be very abstract to create. Just really focus on what you're seeing in the reference photo. And then we have some hair and here I'm kinda just doing a lighter more freestyle edging Okay, so we're going to add in some of the, the topography zones of her neck. And don't just see the light in the dark. Look for more areas that might be harder to see. Some of these super light zones here. And again, I'm using very light pressure in some of these lighter zones. Alright, so now we're going to look at some of the hair, how it curves. Looking for some of the darkest sections and the lighter sections and just kind of roughing in the basic flow of the hair. So next we're going to remove the graphite paper 
and gently lift this one edge here and take a look and see how everything looks. Make sure that you have all the information there that you want. Make sure that you're not missing anything. And then once you're kind of satisfied, take the reference photo off. Now that we have the basics transferred on, we're going to take just some sanding paper. This is a, a foam backed sandpaper that was available from 3M. Unfortunately, I don't think that they still make this, but any fine grit sandpaper will do. And you're just going to slowly start going over all of your graphite lines and making them lighter. You want to make them just barely light enough to see, especially in the, the topo zone areas that we laid in here. Um, those need to be really, really light. Some of the darker areas, such as the eyes, you can leave a little bit less sanded. You can leave it a little bit more original. But some of these topo zones, especially if you push too hard during the transfer stage, go ahead and sand them down because we don't want them to be visible after the burn is complete. Now there's a very good chance after this initial sanding, once you start to work on the wood burning, you'll notice areas where you may not have sanded enough on these guidelines and you may have to kind of go back and sand them a little bit more before you burn. That's fine. Once you burn over the graphite lines, it's a lot more difficult to sand them and make them go away. So before you burn an area, make sure that your lines are exactly the value that you want. Um, make sure that you can hardly see them before you burn them.